So I am here with my good friend, Isabel Palacios. Palacios. <laughs> yes, perfect. Palaces, my queen. Um, if you guys don't already know Isabel, all her information will be down below, but I know that you already do because we have like the same communities completely. And um, Isabel makes beautiful, amazing videos all about empowerment, law of attraction, self-development, all the good stuff. And if you haven't checked her out yet, I'm going to put all your information below. Um, this is going to be the first of this kind of content that I'm making here on YouTube, which is going to be kind of like a podcast long form kind of thing. But so I'm your first guest. Yes, you're my first guest. <gasps> Yay! I'm so honored. <laughs> it was only right. <laughs> you and then Aaron are going to be my first two yeah. guests. And it's going to be great. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to share conversations that I have with my friends because we all have such varied knowledge and so like we're, we're so into different things, but they all connect at some point and create this well-rounded picture, this painting of how life can be and can be lived. So I'm really excited to do this. I don't, I'm not going to make it into a podcast until I can figure out a name. I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with me. I'm usually so good with names. I come up with something so quick and this has been really stressful for me. How did you come yeah. up with taking back your power? You know, actually I came up with it because, um, I made a video probably about three years ago and it was about, it was just like one of those videos that, you know, whenever you're, you, inspiration just comes for a video, like it just Downloads. comes to you and you're like, I need yes. to talk about this. Yeah. yeah. And I made a video on how to get through difficult times. And because I had just had so many DMs and things and people were really going through a hard time. So I was like, I need to just make something empowering for people to go back to. Everything was just off the cuff, like no script, whatever. And I, I made the thumbnail on the video. It said, take, take back, back your, power. your power. I remember yeah. that thumbnail and I remember that <laughs> video. Yes, it was so good. Thank you. And that's that's where it was. Like it was just take back your power. And that was just, I felt like that was the, the theme for all the content I have created. And the reason why I started talking about self-help and the law of attraction was because I felt that, you know, we need to realize we're more powerful than we think. Totally. You know, yeah. when so that's I think where of, it came from. When I think of empowerment and empowerment, female empowerment, but just empowerment in general, you always, you come to mind because like <sighs> you're such a boss, babe. And I'm so, you proud are, to you know are you. seriously, I really am. Um, we're <laughs> going to be you. talking about we were talking a little bit before we started recording this and we have a lot of things that we're really interested in right now. Um, the divine feminine being, you know, the resurgence of the divine feminine being one of those things. And um, Isabel has been reading this really interesting book and getting into earlier Christianity. And I, I have been so fascinated by it. I've been also studying Gnosticism. Um, some of the part, I, I don't really understand a lot of it. Also being Jewish myself, it's been so interesting, like learning these new worlds and bringing everything together and going back to that truth. Like what part of this is really feels truthful to me mm -hmm. and the divine feminine aspect of it and how we're missing that in, in our reality is definitely one of those things. Now that all goes hand in hand with what we're experiencing right now on the planet, which is this pandemic that we're going through. How are you handling everything? How are you doing? Well, at the beginning, definitely, I was pretty heavily in the fear because I was watching a lot of the news. I was reading a lot of the worst case scenarios, kind of like collectively what we were all going right. through, you know? Um, but now it's, it's yeah. And now I just feel a sense of calm and I feel like everything's happening as it should and that people are waking up. That's the most beautiful thing is I'm seeing people researching and questioning all these things we've been doing for a long time. You know what I mean? Like we we're questioning and we're always searching for more and we realize that there's more than what they've been feeding us for so long. And there's a big story and there's so much stuff happening behind the scenes. And when you're kind of living your normal life, you know, day to day autopilot, you don't really stop and think where all these things come from and who's making the decisions, who's, you know, influencing us. Um, what do they have to gain from us being 
sheep. You know what I mean? Like you, you start to question these things. And so I'm very grateful that we're alive at this time. Like I'm so like, this is such a monumental moment in human history that I think we're, it's, we're meant to be here. We're meant to be going through this. I think um, that we chose to come here specifically for this time, right? Specifically right. to see this great awakening. Yeah. And as in with on an individual level, most awakenings happen when something triggers it, right? It could be any type of trigger. It could be, you know, triggered after meditation for a very long time, a drug indu induced trigger, um, a trauma or some really big life challenge. And now as a collective, we're all being triggered. We're all being forced to expand our consciousness, to see things differently. It's, it's wild. It's absolutely it is. wild. And, and, and that's, that's the beautiful thing about the people in our community is that everyone has felt this for a while, that this was coming and it was like, you know, we were called maybe a few years ago to go within and start realizing our power, everything comes from within. And now we're being, everyone is literally being forced to go within because if we go to the outside, we see chaos. But when we go within, it's peace, it's calm, it's, it makes sense, it clicks. So yeah, definitely. And, and I would say, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of our communities. I love that they overlap. I think that's so special. Um, <laughs> but I love like our communities, how open they have been, how they have just done the work themselves because that's helping a lot, our collective consciousness. And, you know, people are watching videos and then telling their friends, telling their family, you know, bringing them together and realizing these truths. And now it's just being out up out in the open you know well, these are we are the way showers the light workers are the way showers and a lot of us had to experience everything that people are experiencing now from this collective awakening a long time ago and some people you know have done this many many years before we were even alive and they they were the way showers that led us here and it's just step by step we're all showing the light for humanity to reach this this new level this new understanding of itself and i think that going inwards how everything outside is chaotic so we go in that is the most feminine thing to do and that's where the re-emergence of the feminine is coming from because when we go in inwards when we do the work inside when not everything is a um super force forceful and active and on on the surface which is masculine it's very ambitious it's hustle hustle culture right it's very goal orientated this is just more about healing, about slowing down. And we've been forced as a species, species to go in one <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Inside. Yeah. So this whole awakening is very feminine in nature. Mm -hmm. And how do you see, how do you see the feminine rising right now? I see more of a connection with nature. And to me, you know, Mother Gaia, Sophia, you know, the, the, the earth is so feminine. And that's what I see is that more people are being outside, more people are noticing that that's what's truly important is our root to the earth, our roots that connect us physically, you know, our material selves connect us to the earth. And also when we connect to the earth, we just know peace. And that's how I'm seeing that now is that people are being more connected also with their families, with, you know, realizing that their families, their friends, the people around them, those ties, you know, those tribal soul ties, those are, I think they're inherently feminine because think of the feminine, it's about life and what do you know, life, family, all that ties together. So I see that, that people are realizing, you know, money, the economy, like these are important things, you know, the economy, all that is important. But at the end of the day, we can't be putting our faith into those things because we realize that they're so fickle. You know, they, they don't, they don't give you a, a strong, sturdy foundation for and you. They don't take care of you when it falls apart. Right. But the mm -hmm. home does that feminine mm -hmm. aspect does. And when we talk about this feminine, I think that the most, we always talk about this. We always give this disclaimer when we talk about this stuff, it's not only about women it's does it has nothing to do with the body it's the feminine energies that are coming up right and i right. think that it's very important also to consider that we've all been women at some point if if we <laughs> if we decide if we agree 
to the possibility that we've lived many lifetimes, right? Everybody's right. been a woman at some point. And the female and the feminine has been suppressed for thousands of years. So we're, we're doing great these days. I think we're doing amazingly. However, in the collective unconscious, there's still all this trauma and all this pain from all the suppression that females have faced. And each, each man, whatever sex, whatever gender we are, we've all been women at some point. Mm -hmm. And so this part of us, what we're being called to do now is to kind of go on an individual level, right? And find it within us and elicit that out so that we can support this new, this rising. And I agree, it's a lot about being in the home and forget like stereotypical gender roles. It's just, there's a difference. There's a difference between feminine energy and masculine energy. Mm -hmm. we need both right right oh definitely we need a balance of both and it's not about gender roles that's one thing that we have to again transcend that uh, that notion that ma masculine and feminine are what they mean here on, on earth literally in the 3d physically yeah mm -hmm. yeah that and i think that that short that short sells what it truly means the divine feminine and the divine masculine it just kind of you know, to define is to limit. And those definitions are so, yeah, I know you say that a lot. Those definitions are so, just so archaic. They just don't, they don't give it justice. So whenever we want to understand the divine feminine and the divine masculine, we have to get rid of that paradigm, you know, transcend the paradigm and look at it in a bigger sense. And that's when you truly get to know it. So, you know, stop looking at yourself as just a female or just a male or whatever it may be that you wish to identify as, not see it as that and merely feel it as energy, you know, feel it as an essence, as a sense of being, not as a physicality. And, you know, if we can get into Gnosticism and mysticism, you know, later on in, in this, I know that we wanted to, um, but that's a great way to look at it is that we are a part of a whole and within us we have god we have creation we there is no separation that we are all we are all united in one as energy as spiritual beings so yeah definitely the the whole gender role thing um whenever i i talk about the divine feminine i try to make that distinction as much as totally. i can that mm -hmm. it's not about that mm -hmm. Um, but also to be aware of our own nature as humans. And, and that's the thing is that balance of, you know, being human, and also being spiritual beings, you know, and when to differentiate the two. A hundred percent. Well, just honestly to jump into Gnosticism, because what we really are missing is that divine feminine knowledge, which is Sophia, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that um, Gnosticism is not very well known. Do you want to explain a little bit about it? Is yeah. So to my knowledge... You know, and, I, and it's funny because I learned, I started learning about Gnosticism back when I was in high school uh -huh. because I was super interested in esoteric knowledge. I was super interested because there's a difference between exoteric and esoteric, you know, and I grew up Christian. Some people know that I grew up Catholic, um, but I always wanted more knowledge. I always wanted to know more because for me, the way that it was explained in the church growing up you know, it was always about Catholics. It's about the mystery of faith. You know, that there's mysteries, there's divine mysteries. Ooh. And there was frankly things that we couldn't conceptualize or we didn't know, you know, it was kind of like, it wasn't knowledge for the everyday person. It was kind of knowledges that priests had or, you know, monks or people who were higher up in the hierarchy of the church had. And that we as lay people, we just, you know, couldn't conceptualize if that makes sense. So, but I always was a natural learner. So I picked up a book called Secret Societies um, and it just dove into all these different things, you know, stuff that we know more of today, but back then you didn't really know too much about it. So I was reading about that when I was 15 and I couldn't grasp it, what Gnosticism was. I couldn't really conceptualize it and it kind of went away my core beliefs at the time. So I just, you know, put it away. But recently I was called to search more on Mary Magdalene. And Mary Magdalene is one of the 
first apostles. You know, she was one of the first followers of Christ, female followers. And in the Bible, throughout the Bible, you will notice that when Jesus talks about his female followers or she's mentioned at all, she's always mentioned first. Mm. And there have been, there is actually a gospel according to Mary Magdalene. And it wasn't accepted until probably the 20th century. It wasn't, it wasn't even considered really. Um, and in it, there are many, there, the, this is the interesting part, is that the entire middle of the gospel is gone. And how strange is that? You know, not the beginning, not the end. Ex- well, that's the thing we don't, we don't know. know. No one we don't knows. know. That, yeah, no one really okay. knows. There's, And I, I believe that it was taken out because there were things that went against the doctrine of the church at the time. The patriarchal or, rule. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the early Christians, and this is something that I didn't know for a long time until I started to research it, but the early Christians, they were basically Gnostics. Um, they believed in a mystical way of reading the Bible. And now we have the way Christians read the Bible now. And, and please, like, don't take this as me, you know, being judgmental. I'm, I have still very close ties to Christianity. My family is very Catholic. Like, I I'm, I'm respect everyone's religion. Um, but, you of know, course. of course, we want to dive into more knowledge and see what's there. Open up to more possibilities. It's right, just a possibility. right. Yeah. So one thing that I have read is that the early Christians were very much into mysticism and visuals and a lot of them had visions. And the interesting thing about Mary Magdalene was that she was the person after Jesus was crucified, she went into the cave and looked for him. And the other apostles were hiding because they were afraid of that they were going to get killed, you know. Um, so, but she, strong woman, she went and she went to look for him and she found that he was gone the third day. And and they asked, she went and told everyone that he had risen and they had questioned her. The other apostles say, how do you know that he rose? Like, you know, they, they didn't believe her. And she said, cause I saw it in a vision. He gave me a vision and he told me. And the other apostles at first didn't believe her. And then one of the other apostles basically stood up for her and said, listen, she was the closest one to Christ. She was, the, she was like very close to him. And there's some theories that he was his, she was his wife, but I don't believe she was his wife. And I'm going to get into that in a second. But um, so basically she said, I saw a vision. He said he had risen. He spoke to me. They didn't believe her. And then they said, no, we should believe her because she was the closest one to Christ. So, In reality, Christianity is based on the fact that Christ died for our sins and then he was crucified and he resurrected. And what creates Christianity is the fact that he resurrected, right? Who was the first one to talk of his resurrection? Wow. Yeah. So the other apostles, yeah. So the other apostles basically came to know the story of the resurrection and preaching it through her. Wow. I had no idea. I'd never heard of this. Okay. Yeah. So in, in, you know, there's a lot of other things that go into it. So basically the way it was formed was that Peter went to Rome to start the, the what we know now as the Catholic, Catholic Church, Church in Rome. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mary Magdalene, what did she do? She went to a cave in Southern France and she basically had her own followers. She practiced her own version of Christianity, which I think is... The version that Christ intended it to wow. be. Wow. And what, what does that look like? Well, this is the thing is the gospel of Mary talks a lot about going within. Mm. Going within to make a connection with Christ of just seeing through the mind's eye, through through the mind. And that's something that, and I implore anyone who is listening to please read up on the gospel of Mary and just see the, just the fundamental differences that there are now between, you know, church doctrine today and what was talking, what she was talking about there. Um, and there are still basically in the first and second centuries, you know, after the death of Christ, there was a big movement in the South of France that was very heavily in the feminine and the goddess, 
um, you know, they saw God as not just the male, as a male figure, but as, yeah, both. Mm -hmm. And, but over time, you know, as the Catholic church was formed and, you know, these, these things kind of went against basically hearsay, it was called, um, they basically shut that all down. They said that it wasn't true Christianity. And then in the fifth century, I believe it was Pope Gregory said that Mary Magdalene was basically a prostitute. Mm. So when you label the woman a prostitute, she was basically discredited. And yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's so interesting to me to find out that Mary Magdalene went into the cave and started her own kind of like, I have in my notes before we knew what we were going to talk about. That's why I know this is so perfect. And we were meant to talk about this today mm -hmm. about Sophia and about connecting to the divine feminine. How do we do that? And one of the ways that I keep seeing across my readings, across my research, all these oracles and channelers are all saying it, is to connect to Sophia, to connect to divine feminine was wisdom. You must be in silence. You go inwards. And that's exactly what you said, that that's how Mary Magdalene's approach to uh, practicing Christianity, you know, it's about on, on an inner level to connect to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that right. exact same thing. It's just withdrawing, retreating into the inner worlds, silencing things, quieting distractions, and connecting. And we get that divine feminine wisdom dropped into us in the form of downloads, in the form of, you know, information, guidance, mm -hmm. messages, just like the oracles did, just like the female oracles did before they were all burned alive. Exactly. The, and many were burnt at the stake. Yes. And, um, and that's what happens with the, after the Roman Catholic Church, right? The magic is taken right. away and we move over to a more patriarchal society. Right, that you can only get God through a church or through the priest and through that hierarchy, patriarchal hierarchy, if you will, um, that basically discredited the women mm -hmm. um, and saw women as simply... And that's the thing about Christ. If you read, he was very much... I mean, I, I, I use these terms lightly because obviously the the terminology changes over time, but he would be what I would call a feminist, you know, because he was very much in favor of you know his mother he was very close to his mother um and he had this very close relationship with mary magdalene and he he really preached something a lot different than what we know as modern christianity and i wow. and i want people to go to the bible because i know you know the bible is filled with different things and perhaps translations changed over time but it's important that we read it in a mystical sense and realize that there is a lot of truth in there as well. Um, but definitely over time, it didn't serve. And there's a story actually. Um, have you heard the story of Thecla? I believe Thecla. No. So she was basically, so Paul was one of the apostles and she was a Paul after Jesus Christ, you know, they're all called to spread the word of Christ. And that's what Mary Magdalene did. She went to the south of France and, you know, spreading the word of Christ. Um, and basically Thecla, she was a, a noble woman, I would say, in her in her town. Um, I believe it was in Greece. Yeah, I believe it was in Greece. Um, which correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows the story. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I get confused sometimes all the places they're from. Um, but she was sitting in her window and the Apostle Paul came to her town and started preaching the word of Christ. And she heard him through her window. And she was engaged to a man that was obviously get married, have children. That was what you had to do as a woman. Didn't matter if you were rich or poor, that was what you had to do. You were basically either a daughter or somebody's wife. Mm -hmm. So she heard his, his teachings and it resonated so much with her that the story goes that she sat in her window for days just listening to him talk. And her fiancé said, what are you doing? Why are you listening to this man? You're my fiancé. You're not supposed to be, you know, what's going on? Like, basically, they saw that she had been taken over by the word of, of this man, the right. stranger. Right. Um, so she decided to leave her home and follow Paul. And basically her story is the story of the woman who baptized herself. And it's so, it's, it's so powerful. Um, 
So she started following Paul and she became like his, a loyal follower of Christ and all that. And um, she left the home, her fiance and her mother, her mother was furious and said, this is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be a wife. You're supposed to get married. And basically she started following Paul and then she got arrested and she was thrown in, in jail with another woman who was basically a slave. So they were both together, like a noble woman and a slave, both together in a cell. And they were called, you know, like the lowest of the low. And it came to show you at the end of the day, it doesn't matter for us women, you know, it doesn't matter. We're all so connected. Where you come Even, from, it's kind of like where you come from and where you end up, right? So they were, yeah. it's like this noble woman and this slave, was the slave in there for the same reason? Um, I don't, I don't know that much about the slave. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about her, but they, they create, they had like a very strong bond. Yeah. Wow. So, um, and yeah. That so connection. That's, re that's really, really interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I think I got ahead of myself in the story, but <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. I love um, hearing these. I could hear you talk about this all day. I swear. Cause yeah. I love history. I love religious history. This is I love this. Go on. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but the interesting thing is that she became a loyal follower of, of Paul. And what happened was they were going through a small town and she had shaved her head and like wore, you know, like, you know, robes or whatever. And, um, and she had rejected her role as a wife or whatever. She didn't want to get married. She didn't want to do that life. She wanted to follow Paul and is unheard of. of uh -huh. in those times and and so yeah and unheard of because she went against everything and then so but she was very physically beautiful so what happened was she was walking through this town and the the king the emperor saw her and he wanted to basically take advantage of her there and paul was with her and he didn't defend her he just kind of stayed to the side because she had said, I'm with him. And then he didn't, he, he didn't allowed it to happen. Okay. And what happened was she fought off the guy. She fought off the emperor and everybody noticed what was going on in the street. And then she ran away. Like she basically overpowered him. And she had been such a devoted follower of Paul. And she had asked him to baptize her. And she said, no, I mean, he said, no, um, you know, you're not ready for that yet, okay. like basically, you know, but she was ready for it. So after she got in prison, she was getting ready to get burnt at the stake. You know, she got imprisoned for all these things that she was doing by her family. Her own mother didn't support her, didn't save her. Her mother said, come back. And she said, no, this is my destiny. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so then after she, she basically got undressed, they undressed her, put her up on a stake to be burned as a heretic, as um, because in those days, people, don't, well, people know this, but in those days, it was a crime to be Christian. It was very, oh, we were being persecuted. Yeah. Really? Okay. So at this time, yeah. It was like the old Roman empire still. Um, so she was going to get burnt at the stake and then she started to pray. She started to pray and as the fire was going up, all of a sudden thunderclouds showed up at the top, like uh, above her and it started raining. So what? all the, yeah, the all fire the, and, uh -huh, yeah. So all the fire was, was gone. And then she got off the stake and she got a robe and she ran away. Yeah. Um, so this is like basically her story. And another part where she was basically out preaching the gospel, you know, she was preaching all these things. I mm -hmm. want you to share the poem because it. That oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will. I will get there. So, um, so she she went out and she was preaching herself after this. Yes, yes. So she was very adamant that this was her her path, and then it ended up she got arrested again because she didn't die the first time. They put her in a an arena, basically a pit, to be mauled by wild animals, and she stood there defiantly. And she, you know, she didn't have any fear towards this lion that was coming towards her. And she looked the lion in the eye. And basically the lion was a female lion and looked at her and, and noticed that she was so courageous. And the lion stopped, didn't go attack her. Um, and then all these animals started to, yeah, major chills. All these animals started to come towards her and the lion was attacking each and basically defending her from these other animals that were coming to maul her. 
Um, and she started to chant basically um, to the women that were in the arena watching and all the women started cheering for her. Like she basically, yeah, like all the women like came out for her and, and, and were there for her because she was so strong, you know, like it, it, it gets me kind of emotional because it, totally. it, it makes That's, me feel like, oh my God. And yeah, it, it's so beautiful to think like we've been told for so long to be subservient, to be, you know, on the back burner, let the man lead. But to see that in, in the first and second centuries, these stories exist. This kind of bravery and defiance yeah. of the patriarchy. Yeah. It's it's incredible, inspirational. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I kind of gave a short a short part of that of that story of Thecla, but I encourage anyone to read the story. Um, but yeah, so you're talking about the poem. Yeah, I want to hear mm -hmm. the poem of Mary Magdalene, right? That they found. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there are three versions of the gospel, which I recommend to anyone who's more interested in this. Please read this book. Um, it's called Mary Magdalene Revealed. I'm actually reading it right now, and this is kind of like. And that's a really powerful way to connect to Mary Magdalene's energy. Yeah. Connecting to her energy, connecting to Mother uh, Mary energy, connecting to Kuan Yin and even mm -hmm. Sophia by studying them, studying them and hearing these stories. It's a really great way to connect, but go on. It really is. Yeah, and Meg, Megan Watterson, she's actually a, um, a theologian. She went to Harvard Divinity School and she does a great job reading this book. Like I've been reading it over and over because it's so good. I'm going to read um, that for sure. Yeah, it's. I think you'd love it, Lior. Seriously, but um, she goes into these stories in in this in this book. But one thing that she wrote about was the Berlin Codex, which is a version of the Gospel according to Mary Magdalene that basically is not no, well known to a lot of Christians because it was taken out, you know. And there's parts of it that are missing, but they're found within the Berlin Codex was a poem called it's, it's <laughs> called the thunder perfect mind okay and this is made in the the thunder perfect mind and it's actually quite long um but what's very interesting is that it constantly refers to god as she and which is not something that we have in this day and age no mm -hmm. not at all and and, and that that's the thing is that you know I've, I've actually debated this with other Christians that I know and, you know, they don't take it the, you know, the right way or whatever, you know, because it goes against a lot of what we're taught. It's what know? I'm experiencing. It's what I've been experiencing for the last six months is about I'm my perspective of God from my religion has changed so deeply because I had this experience where, where I connected to Mother Mary energy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And did. yes, as a Jew, this was very interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Something I didn't expect to happen. And wow. she basically showed me what God is. And it's a goddess, but it's, it's also a God. There's the masculine and the feminine. And we've forgotten so much about the she that when we talk about God in everyday terms, we say he, he knows this, he'll do this, he'll do this for you. He'll show you this, like worship him. And we forget that there's, that God is so grand and so great. How could God only be one aspect of the energies, right? Yeah, right. So it doesn't make, it doesn't make <laughs> sense if you think about it. Yeah, it, really, it doesn't um, make sense. But yeah, but that's what, that's what happened with the Roman Catholic Church and also with Judaism and, and Islam. It's the Judeo-Christian religions. Um, the feminine was suppressed in order to, to make this, to make God a man mm -hmm. and to make us forget about our innate powers. The power that the magic is feminine, right? And the oh, women yeah. that were burnt at the stake and for being intuitive, psychics and magical and how magic was taken away from the people and given to the clerg clergymen or clergymen? I don't Clergy, know. yeah. Clergymen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you know, funny enough, incense is used so much in church, uh -huh. and I have noticed it. It while does praying. something, right? What? It, it it changes the it alters our consciousness. Yeah, and I always forget that in the church that 
incense when burnt goes all the way up to heaven. Oh. Yeah. You know, it's used in so many cultures. It's I don't know yeah. if it is in Judaism, but in so many cultures, in like in temples and churches. So I could mm-hmm. see that. Yeah. Um, I had some on and it was clouding the room. And whenever the, I forget that this happens to me, it puts me into an altered state of consciousness. And I have a very hard time being here. I don't know if you felt that for me for a bit. I was kind of not here. So I had to open the door and I feel better. <laughs> no, you're fine. I love that. I think that's amazing. It's really weird because I can't think with my rational brain when it happens, you know? I could yeah. probably channel when it happens. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's very interesting that you say that because in the Gospel of Mary, Jesus says that the the way you see is not through the heart or the soul, but through the the mind totally and that's where the, the gnosis heart. yeah no gnosis, gnosis right uh-huh. gnosis means knowing right yeah knowing no. and and it's not like the mind as we know it but it's the eye of the mind the eye of the, the third eye uh-huh. or the pineal yeah. gland yeah I, I think that's what it means is like it has to be it, it is and you know i i've been thinking i'm gonna do more research on this and make a video i've been kind of hesitant to about gnosticism um, yeah, I've been kind of hesitant to, but now that I'm talking with you and I love that everything is connecting. It's, um, a, call, it's a call. And the yeah. reason why you felt like you needed to read that book and why you're reading it again and again, it's because you are, we are these oracles. We're the reincarnation of these oracles. And these ideas and these, these divine energies want to be made modernized. They want to come back. They want to return. And that's right. what you're feeling this calling and you have to follow that, babe. Definitely. I, uh, yeah, I feel it. And I can tell how passionate and one you thing, are about it. Yeah. And, and, you know, what we were talking about earlier is how, you know, the Abrahamic religions, the women were kind of just put in the back and then the, the keepers of the knowledge were the men, the priests, the, yeah. the rabbis, you know. Mm-hmm. And now the thing that I realize is that the churches and all these establishments, they didn't want women to be priests or to preach. In, in Judaism as well. In, yeah. It, it's, it's like a ref, uh, reformed Judaism or something that now um, we have female rabbis, but it's uh-huh. a very new thing. It's not very accepted. Uh-huh. And there's a reason. And it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of outrageous because honestly, females are the more spiritual energies it just is so too. not i'm not trying to say anything about our brothers love our brothers love them too so much but it is true that the that um women have a stronger connection to the divine to that creation energy now men are more the consciousness right it's the awareness while women is just that spiritual link and that's why oracles and channelers usually are going to be female and and you know in like delphi i think delphi was where in in greece where they had the oracles of delphi i, I don't remember mm-hmm. but th- it was all women it was women postmenopausal women and then sometimes it was maidens young maidens mm. and we are these channels these open vessels for that information to flow through and yeah yes it's for be, sure, to be like kept Mary away. Magdalene was channeling his messages. That's what I believe that she was a totally. She yeah, she was definitely always meditating. Um, there is a story of her that she, she was taken seven times by angels. Angels lifted her up in the sky seven times a day to receive messages. There's something um, about the number seven in a lot of religions, right? Yes, and seven also is, if you read her gospel, it's seven levels until enlightenment is basically what her gospel is about. And it's the seven deadly sins that we have to overcome each one of those to reach enlightenment to become one with God. Oh, wow. That's basically, yeah, that's basically the whole premise of her, of her, um, of her gospel. And it goes against a lot what we're taught now, you know, as Christians and, um, I, I think that's why it was left out. And to me, it's like, why is the whole middle part missing? You know, like, why is that not there? I think that it, it, it cuts off in this moment so abruptly when she asks Jesus a question, it cuts off when he starts talking about the mind, the eye of the mind. Okay, so that's when he starts and then, okay, and that's when it's cut off. Yeah, let me, let me find. Um, yes. Please. find the section where it says that. That's so interesting. So much of the knowledge is 
hidden and taken away from us. And I think we're at a time in the world right now where the knowledge is re-emerging and that's why the feminine has to re-emerge and again going back to Sophia the goddess Sophia Sophia is the goddess of wisdom of knowledge of knowing Gnosticism uh-huh. yes exactly it's and all I think connected that, I, it is all connected and it all goes back to one thing that is love 100% love. it's all about love Come and anything love. that that pulls you away from what love is is not and we God. have to talk about that you know what I mean We'll talk yeah. about that after. I want I want to hear this section. And then we have a... It's kind of unrelated, the law of attraction thing, but I want to talk about that. Yes, we, yeah, definitely. Twist. Everything ties yeah, together. Yeah, it all ties in. Um, Go ahead. So it says, mind... Wait. Um, Mary asked Christ, so now, Lord, does a person see who sees a vision see it with the soul or with the spirit? All we have of his answer is this provocative yet cryptic start. The Savior answered, a person does not see with the soul or with the spirit, rather the mind, which exists between the two, sees the vision, and that is what, and it cuts off. And it cuts off right there. Okay, very convenient. Very convenient. (laughs) So, you know, all these things about visions, and, and this is another thing, is another prominent woman in, in Christianity was Joan of Arc. And in her story, she was burnt at the stake too, as a witch, because she was seeing, hearing voices and seeing visions. And her story is incredible too. So it, it comes to show you that, you know, this meditation, even though we see that as a Buddhist or Hindu or an Eastern religion type of thing, meditation and prayer going within, that's the power we all have. We, that is our power. We were given that power. It's not... And we forgot. You know, we forgot it because we're taught, we've been taught all our life that everything we have to seek is external, more money, more, more power, more people around us, more, more, more around us. And then we forget we have to go within. Exactly. That's where everything the feminine. is. feminine. Again, going back to those energies. I think, mm-hmm. you know, what I've been playing around with lately, though, is that possible because blaming anybody, blaming anybody is not uh, productive. We cannot be blaming a certain group of people, men, we are one family. We are all connected. They, they've they gotten this power because this has been a system for at least the, the last, at least the last few thousand years. And it's repressed the feminine, but it, it also has really messed with the masculine because men or boys are not initiated in this modern masculine dominant culture so it's this masculine energy that doesn't know where to go there's no initiation like in indigenous tribes they have an initiation the thing about the feminine is girls don't have to learn how to become a woman it's innate the female is always actualized it's always Uh there you become a woman men don't become men on their own they remain boys unless they are initiated Wow. And as a society, we haven't been initiated. So we have this very masculine society with no initiations, with just a suppression of um, what it really means to be a man and the suppression of the female. And so that's why we are where we are now. So rather than blaming our brothers, rather than blaming the masculine and pointing fingers, which is never productive, we have to find a way to initiate mankind and Mm -hmm. the way that that's going to happen is that they have to be initiated by the feminine rights because now that the female is coming the female is re-emerging so and it's just it's that balance because right now the way things are even if we had female leaders it would be exactly the same because our oh yeah our female leaders are masculine in nature too right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just an overpowering of it. And it's like you said, it's not the true meaning of what it is. It's not the true meaning um, of being a man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of men might feel a lot of conflict within because they're being forced to adapt to something that is not innately there. It's not innately their essence. You know, it's not their true essence. Um, and that's why we can't look at this 
type of stuff in traditional gender roles because that undercuts what you're really supposed to be looking for because there's some men who they like to, you know, this whole idea that men have to be the leaders and they have to be the head of the household and they have to be the steady rock, you know? And and it's funny because the strongest relationships I've seen, you know, between men and women is that the woman is the rock, you know? It's always kind of like, she's my rock, she's the thing. And I think that's what we have to see is that whether it's in relationships or whatever way we see it, we have to not look at ourselves simply as our gender, but as how we feel within. And I think that's number one is connecting. What feels more real and truthful to you? Are you a man or a woman? Are you being forced to do something like there's women that tell me, I don't feel like being a mother. You know, I don't think that I want to be a mother. And does that make me less feminine? It's like, no, because at the end of the day, you're not supposed to do anything except be your truest version. And, and that's, I think the main thing for men is that you don't have to be or have or have all this money or have all these women or have all this attention or whatever is claimed to be a man. You just have to go within and find what is truly you. And unfortunately, that is the feminine aspect that's been indoctrinated and programmed out of men. Mm -hmm. Because again, the feminine is, it just is. It just is in non-doing and non-being. It just exists and it's Mm -hmm. valuable by innately. While the masculine, it's like, I have to prove myself. I have to continuously prove myself. And that's, yeah. we've also found ourselves as a, as, a, as a society with people who are all leaning masculine. Most people are leaning masculine because we have to in order to align with how things have been. But now with this great awakening that we're experiencing, we're not going to have to do that anymore. We're not right. going to have to force ourselves to align with that um, goal oriented become something culture we- and that's that's what it is you're exactly right and it's that idea of competition that we have to compete with each other in order to be successful in business in order to be successful you know materialistically successful we have to you know get on what, what do you call it stomp on everybody else right like, you know rather than competition. lift each other up yeah Exactly. And what what I realize is that everybody is connected. We're all connected. We're all one. And when you realize that, that we're all one and that doesn't matter what another person's job is or what they do or what they look like or where they're from, we're all one. And when we realize that we tap into that energy of love, which at the end of the day, that's what awakening is, is to realize that what's been ruling the planet right now is not our true story as humans, that humans aren't, I don't believe humans are inherently evil. I don't believe humans are inherently bad. And that's, that's kind of the language that's been out for so long is that humans are evil. Humans are this humans. And I don't believe that. And and if you go back to the teachings of Christ, he didn't believe that either. And in the gospel of Mary, it says this too, that there is no sin. There is no sin. I love that so much. Yeah. And you imagine how revolutionary these are, you know, even to us now, it's like, whoa, they were saying that back then, you know, and and it's been this truth. It's been the truth for so long and it's been suppressed for so long. Wow, What a validation. Yeah, (laughs) It, it all makes sense. Like everything we're called to, you know, even if if it goes against everything you were taught, everything you were taught was true. Please go into it. You know, even if if these ideas of awakening and all these things going on the planet and our government, please question those things. Even if it goes against what your parents taught you or whoever or political parties, which I mean, is, is the biggest proof of how division is so that's how they, they they try to divide us because they don't want us to know how powerful we are when we're whole as one. They don't want us to realize that we're all connected. We're weaker when we re- when we feel like we're just alone. We're so much weaker. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. we have so much more that we can talk about, and I want you. I want you to come back, Isabel, whenever you feel like we'll do this so much. But I do want us to talk about just because that it kind of relates to what you were just saying—the law of attraction thing. The the question that we've been getting a lot. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, I, I mean, a lot, I don't, I, th- I feel like lately I've been getting it more than usual. You too? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's the, the idea that the law of attraction is demonic or there's dark forces. And I'm not, I, I, uh, and it's funny, I, I get these messages sometimes and I read them and it says, you don't know about the spiritual world. The spiritual world is full of all this. And I'm like, honey, we're working in the spiritual world. That's what we are. We're spiritual beings. <laughs> of course, the spiritual world we're is not something spiritual. to fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're all spiritual. Everything is energy. It's spirit. And to be afraid of it, that's, I mean, I understand why you might be afraid of it, but also go deeper. Go deeper and question, why are you taught to be afraid of this? I'd be wary of anything that makes you change your mind through fear. Anything that originates, in my perspective, fear comes from lies, right? It's Mm -hmm. all egoic, egocentric thinking. Mm -hmm. So if you've been convinced to think something is evil out of fear, if you've had to be convinced at the PR team to make you think that the law of attraction or spirituality is evil, had to do that, their method, their marketing method is fear, you should be very wary of it. You should really question that. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is that we're often told to be good people out of fear. Don't do this or you're going to go to hell. Don't do this. and But we're, that's out of the basis that humans are inherently bad and that we need to be controlled and that we need to be put in fear to be subservient. But that's the thing is I believe God gave us the ability to be conscious and our ability to tell stories and these abilities that humans were given that other animals don't have. I believe that we were given these things to go into them, not to hide them or to be afraid of them or be afraid of our spirit, be afraid of the spiritual realm, because at the end of the day, that's what Christ dealt with. That's what Christ is, is the spirit, is the the, the Holy Spirit, if you will. Um, and that's never anything to fear. Now, there are people who try to do other things out of malice, and that never is what we're about. You know what I mean? Um, that's not what we want to... We're At the end of the day, I believe the law of attraction taught me about love. 100%. About the Bible. Audio. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It just keeps crashing. Is that what it's doing? Yeah, it just cuts off after a little while. Um, the vibration of love. Start. Yeah. <laughs> so the vibration of love, I learned all of that through the law of attraction. And I don't see the law of attraction as a religion. I don't see the law of attraction as my whatever. I see the law of attraction as a mindset and also as a tool to use to ask you to go deeper. Because when I learned about the law of attraction, yes, maybe there's people teaching the law of attraction who might not be good people. And I've realized that and I <laughs> keeps cutting off. I can tell when it does it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it taught me to search for more knowledge and it taught me a lot of the inner power, which for many years I felt so powerless. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was just going to be at the mercy of whatever God wanted and this and that or what external people wanted for me. And all my life I was taught that people knew more about me than I knew about myself Mm. and that other people knew what was better for me than me, you know, and and that's what I always felt like challenging. And I was going to talk about this earlier, um, but one thing that I always always had conflict with my mom she's a devout catholic Mm -hmm. and i always asked her growing up because i always wanted to be a priest Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i wanted to yeah like yeah and and the funny story like whenever i was little i used to like create it like make an altar and like do communion like as a like play pretend like that was so beautiful i love that interesting yeah and i always asked her like why can't women be priests? Like, why isn't there not a priestess or, Mm -hmm. you know, and then she would give me her explanation and I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. (laughs) So it's, you were definitely a priestess many, many times in your past lives. There's no doubt about it. (laughs) There's no doubt about it. (laughs) Different kinds of people. Why are you freezing? Okay. Yeah. Stop. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, you know, that, that I feel like I was called to teach Mm -hmm. and, spirituality has always been a part of me as a kid 
Um, but definitely we have to go within and realize that the law of attraction is simply something that people, it's like the very basic level of going within. You know what I mean? That's, Just the, the premise that your thoughts are creating a reality is very basic, basic foundation. I actually mm-hmm. have a video about like the spiritual journey. I think the law of attraction is the best entryway for anybody to get into their spiritual journey. Because exactly. it's like, look, like your the, the things that you do on an individual matter, individual level actually matter and actually affect the way your, your physical reality will play out. And I think that what you were saying is so important because yeah, there are people who are going to use spiritual laws for not for not such good things. What mm-hmm. really matters and if you want to stay in the light and if you want to stay in a pure place is to have pure intention. Your intention is what matters. If you have an intention that's like, I'm going to steal this person's husband and I'm going to hurt this person. And yeah, I think that could accumulate negative karma, honestly. But mm-hmm. there's nothing inherently negative or evil about the concept and about these universal laws. It's just how this world is governed. It just... Thank you. It just, yeah, it's, and that word inherently mm-hmm, is important mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it's not from the devil it's not any of that it just is it just is. you know it same as is. the law of gravity there's people who can use the law of gravity For against evil. others you push people <laughs> yeah you push people off a building there's a law of gravity exactly you know yes yeah and so it, it's it's all about how you use it but at the end of the day i believe that what we put out is what we get back 100%. and those that wish harm on others or wish to do whatever it may be on others you're gonna get it back you know, and um, if not here in, in the 3D, in this physical world, you will feel it somewhere else. Life. Yeah, somewhere yeah. else. And yeah. and that's what we have to be aware of. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what it's all about is like, don't let people make you feel fear and to put you into submission. Because this is what the awakening is about is our power as human beings. And the mm-hmm. fact that we have been disconnected from God and from source, from Gaia for so long mm-hmm. and that now we are returning home. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's what, it is. what a beautiful place to leave off on. Wow. <laughs> so just remember to that everything is about love, especially in this time on the planet when we are experiencing all this, this great awakening. And mm-hmm. a lot of people want guidance on how to do this. There is no way to do this right or wrong. It's just come from a place of love, exist in a place of love. And when fear comes up, question it. Mm-hmm. question oh yeah that's it and this is the thing dr joe Spenda talks about mm-hmm. this all the time is that you when you literally feel when you're in love you literally can't feel fear there's literally oh, yes, the receptors I are blocked yeah so much. the so oxytocin much. when you feel love it blocks the fear so if you're in fear it's the opposite of love exactly and hate is not so, the opposite of love it's it's genuinely fear it's fear or love and that's it yeah yeah and so that's what we have to realize is that Anytime something's putting you in fear, question it, okay? Because that's not what you're meant to be. You're not meant to live in fear. Mm -hmm. You are a being of light and love. Mm -hmm. And return to the feminine by going inwards. Yes, for sure. (laughs) Your PSA from Lior and Isabel. (laughs) I really want you to come back on. We have so much to talk more to talk about. So you guys, if there's anything you want us to expound about um, from this conversation or that you want us to talk about in the future, we have so much that we are so interested in. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh my God, totally. We want to talk about more about the great awakening, more about connecting to the feminine, more. I want to know more about Gnosticism and history, everything. So please comment and let us know what you want us to talk about and make sure that you check out Isabel's channel. Please put out those Gnostic, Gnostic knowledge videos and all that. I want to watch them so much. I will Mm -hmm. definitely. That's something I've been called to do for a long time. And I wanted to invite you onto my podcast Ah! because I can't believe I haven't had you. I'd love to. Thank you, man. (laughs) What an honor. What an I accept. And we can talk, we can talk about this because my my audience has been wanting me to talk about the awakening. I'm like, who better than Lior? I'd love to. Me and my map (laughs) will be there. Your map is amazing. I actually am thinking about buying one myself because it was, it's really amazing. It's, now it all makes so much thing. sense. Mm-hmm. And it's been, yeah. I've been having, I've had it um, hanging on in my house for the, over a year, right? And it's like, I'd always go and check in and I'd be like, well, where are we now? Where are we now? And now everything that it says is being, it's, it's the crazy. We can talk about disclosure too. There's 
so oh, much yeah. to talk about. So much. <laughs> thank you, Milo. Thank you for being here. This is great, Leo. I love you so much. You're such a you. light. I love you so much. You made my day. Thank you for carrying <laughs> our conversation when I was in an altered state of con- consciousness. I really appreciate that. I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>